Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again back to Abbotsford Small Business, where you can, of course, find us on the internet at abbotsfordsmallbusiness.com. Don't be afraid to give us an email address, an email address, an email at abbotsfordsmallbusiness at gmail.com. Love Gmail. If you don't have a Gmail account yet, I would highly suggest that you go out and get a Gmail account. And go back and um, on the search box on my website, just enter the word Gmail. And it will take you to the explanations of, that I have about uh, the benefits of having a Gmail account. There are many and varied. I mean, Gmail is owned by Google. Uh, YouTube is owned by Google. I mean, everything seems to be owned by Google these lately. <laughs> and, and have you heard about the patent wars? Now, IBM, <laughs> this is really interesting. You know, when you look at what's happening with the high-tech companies, just shake your head because it's a litigious society. That means everyone is suing everybody. And Apple seems to be the big, the big bully sometimes because you just, you, you make a product that looks like uh, an, an iPad and all their claws come out. But IBM had a whole bunch of extremely valuable patents. And uh, they're they're in somehow they're in cahoots with uh, with Google, and they have sold them to Google. So we shall see who's who's now going to win in the patent wars. Anyway, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you here. You can of course phone us if you're out of the Fraser Valley. I don't want you to pay long distance charges. So if you're in Vancouver, please give our Magic Jack phone number a call at seven seven eight eight hundred zero two four six. I'll also put it down to the lower third here. And uh, if you are in the Abbotsford area, don't hesitate to give me a call on my private cell phone number, which is no longer private anymore because I keep giving it out, <laughs> 778-908-5759. Now, today there was a couple of things that I need to talk to you about. We have been doing very, very busy putting together videos that explain how to set up your blog, how to set up a WordPress site, how to, you know, and, and uh, uh, one blog in particular is at blogger.com, which is owned by, you guessed it, uh, Google. That is a completely free blogging platform. And then I told, showed you how to create a WordPress blog. WordPress you have to pay for, but um, Blogger you don't. So I've stepped you through that, and today we're going to talk about a wonderful subscription service called FeedBurner. I always use FeedBurner, but before I do that, before I do that, I have to tell you something, a little story, true story that happened to me at Christmas time. I have an aunt, uh, Aunt Pearl, that I have not seen for, I'll bet you, over 30 years, over 30 years, and she phoned um, a few weeks ago, this is now January, and she phoned me for Christmas and she said, she said, I'd, I'd like to have your, your address, um, because I want to send you a Christmas card. And that's, some people send, still send Christmas cards. This is kind of nice. It's delightful. So we, we provided the address. And a couple of days later, here comes a, a beautifully designed Christmas card. And I opened it up. And I just about fell off of my chair. Uh, inside it was uh, a check. For, now, I have to remember that th this aunt of mine hasn't seen me for 30 years. There was a check in there big enough for me to go out and get a very expensive high-definition camera for the studio here and get an extremely expensive machine called a, 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 um, a juiced link. And that is a, a box that you you put underneath the high definition camera and it allows you to use expensive uh, microphones like the the microphone I'm using here and the other XLR microphone in the studio on a consumer grade camera. Now these consumer grade cameras if you take a look at what Hollywood was doing 10 years ago f as far as the lenses and, and the uh, the quality that's what the consumer grade cameras are doing now. So. I mean, for a thousand bucks, you can get just an unbelievable camera. And she sent me a check to do both. I mean, I, I can't believe it. So I phoned her and I said, Auntie Pearl, <laughs> what's going on? Like, I, I, I haven't seen you for so long. She said, look, it's Christmas time. You deserve what, what I sent you and just enjoy it. So I had to explain, you know, look, I said, Auntie Pearl, we, 
I, I help small businesses out, and I help them get on their feet because the, the bankruptcy rate on small and medium-sized businesses is so high. So I offer a free service on one of one section of my business for them to come over and use my broadcast studio, and for them to be, to make a broad a web presence. So I said, your gift is really I need you to know is really helping a lot of small and medium-sized businesses. So I want to dedicate. This show and the coming shows in the new year, year to my Aunt Pearl. There is not a better person that I just, I, you, you could, you should have seen the look. I should have had a video camera running. <laughs> I opened the, <laughs> the, the uh, Christmas card and I do it. What? Uh, it can't be possible. But I, I phoned up and, and sure it was. So, you know, it just instills the, the wonderfulness of people. The, the giving attitude of people, and, and like I say, 30 years, I, I haven't seen it for 30 years. So this summer, hopefully, the whole family will go up to where they live. They live in Blind Bay, a beautiful place. In the, uh, in, uh, up, I think it's close to the Okinawa. It's, it's nestled in there. But I uh, hope to see you then, Aunt Pearl, and I will be personally thanking you myself this spring if we can come up. I think we're planning a family reunion. June or July. Anyway, I'll see you then. So let's let's continue on with the with the uh, podcast now. So you've got. To, I am assuming that you've already built your blog, either the free one on Blogger or the paid one on WordPress. And so what we're going to do now is this. You've, and I'm also assuming that you started a blog and you've, you've put up your videos. And I'm a big fi video freak. I think that, you know, with, with YouTube charging you absolutely nothing to store your videos, go please use YouTube all you can. But what I've also started to do is I've started to use Spreaker. And I've done a, a separate, um, a separate podcast on using Spreaker. And what Spreaker is, it's speaker with an R in the middle. Uh, what Spreaker allows you to do is create your own radio station your own radio show and uh, there are thousands of people that are creating their own radio show and from what I can see Spreaker is just in its infant stage but I love it I absolutely love it so now what am I I'm doing is this whenever I put out a video such as this I'm also taking uh, the video and audio content into Camtasia or you can even do it through um, Windows Movie Maker and you can strip the video portion out so you're just left with just the audio and then you take that and you load it onto Spreaker. Now, when you go to Spreaker's website, there is a player that you can download from Spreaker on that particular episode, uh, that audio episode, your, your own personal radio station, and you can bring it back and put it on your blog. So we have a new format now. Uh, it looks good. Now you're going to, when you come to the, the website, you're going to see this video, just like I always create a video. And then just on the top of it, you're going to see a small blue player and that is the Spreaker player. Now, this is for people that want to download the episode and take it with you. Um, if you want to load it on your your iPhone, your iPad, your Android phone, your MP3 device, your you know whatever mobile media that you have, you can even burn them on a CD and take them and listen to them in the car if you'd like. So I wanted to give people the availability to do that. Now, when you take a look at the little speaker player, there's going to be three little uh, icons there. And the first icon on the left-hand side will be something that looks like a Mickey Mouse head. It's a little face and then uh, two little arrows going like, the lines going like this, and then another little dot. That is the share icon. So if you want to share the episode with someone, you just click that and it brings it up and says, how do you want to share it? You want to send it with an email? You want, you know. And then, um, so that's the sharing icon of it. And that's very, very important. For, as a blogger and a podcaster, you should have that share button because if somebody comes along and they really like it, they're going to want to share your content. The button in the middle is, um, is there's a, a downward arrow button. It's like this and then, you know how the, they have the downward arrow. That is the download button. So as soon as you click on that, you have an opportunity to actually download that audio portion of the podcast. That's what makes it nice and easy and convenient and mobile for people. And the third button or icon on the right hand side is there'll be a dot and a line and a dot and a line and a dot and a line. That is to view all of the episodes that I have done on the Spreaker radio program. And by the way, I only did Spreaker, oh my goodness, 
four or five days ago, and I've already got comments on that. One fellow, he really liked my comment, uh, and he really liked my format and the information in it. So we've got a dialogue. He's, he's got a radio show there, and he does a lot of really interesting sound effects. So I've downloaded a couple of his MPEGs as well that I'm going to use in the show later on. So I wanted to talk to you about um, um, FeedBurner. FeedBurner is a very powerful subscription service that you need to have. You should have some kind of subscription service associated with your blog or your website. So listen to this. When people come and they visit you on your website or blog, and they say, wow, I really like that content. How do I listen to all their shows? Well, you've got to have some kind of a service like this. And, I, and I've used FeedBurner for a couple of years on my other blogs and podcasts. And I really like it. So what happens is there's a little box there, and they just enter their email address. And every time I create new content, it sends them the link, sends them the page with the new, with the new um, audio and video. And it's really handy because it doesn't matter whether you're a blogger that does only text and pictures. It doesn't matter if you do only video. It doesn't matter if you do only audio. If you're not courageous to do video yet, you can just you know do audio and text and pictures. Um, it's a service. FeedBurner is a service that will collectively do everything together. So this, there's a part two to this, and um, I will be putting it up. I'll do Camtasia, so you can see exactly on the screen what I did and the motions that I went through to sign up to FeedBurner. It's just it's it's free, absolutely free. Um, I made a promise to all of my listeners and viewers. I will go out of my way to find things that are absolutely free first before we review stuff that you have to pay for. Because if it's free, why not take advantage of it? YouTube is free. You know, your email, your Gmail is free. <laughs> Feedburner is free as well. So look forward to part two. But uh, Aunt Pearl, it, that 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 money just still just it. I I couldn't believe it. It was speechless. So in the next shows, you will see the ability of me to be able to take two very expensive XLR cameras out with um, pre-amplifiers out on the road to do mobile interviews at people's places of business and the audio quality is going to be just through the roof. It's going to be professional grade. See, the only thing that I was lacking or I thought I was lacking in the studio was a real high, real high quality, high definition camera and now with that wonderful check that Amp Pro sent down I can go out and purchase, uh, I'm going to be purchasing the Canon Vixia. I've been drooling over that camera for months. The lenses are extremely good, and now with that juiced link box, I can just hook it up to, uh, I can even hook it up to my wireless Lavalier uh, microphones that I have as well. So the the quality of the shows just keep getting better and better and better, and uh, they as they should. Any blogger or podcaster, if you're in this, for any length of time, and if you want to start doing shows on a regular basis, this is the kind of thing you have to do. But it was just, uh, I thought I would have to save up and save up and save up for this camera, but wow, she's just been just been a tremendous gift uh, and, and such a surprise for Mount Pearl. Stay tuned, folks. Part two coming up on uh, FeedRunner, how, how you get into the program, how you sign up, I'll walk through everything. I've even taken um, uh, pictures through um, Camtasia, Snagit, I believe the program is called, and I'll show you how exactly to set up so you can set up to sub subscribe by emails. So people just enter their email addresses, boom, they get your content every time you create new content. It's fantastic. All right, folks, if you want to get a hold of us, remember, Abbott for Small Business at gmail.com and uh, use my my phone number uh, if you're in the Abbotsford area, 778-908-5759. If you're outside of the Abbotsford area, Magic Jack phone number is 778-800-0246. See you again, everybody. Stay tuned. Part two is coming up on FeedBurner. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again to Abbotsford Small Business. Today we're going to be talking about setting up your uh, feed burner service. And so what I did is I just went to how do I set up feed burner and uh, put it in Google. And it was the very first thing that came up. Step by step guide to set up feed burner for WordPress. So let's take a look at the slide. Now this is when you get into feed burner, 
the FeedBurner page, and all you have to do is go www.feedburner.com. Here is the step-by-step -step beginner guide. So it gives you a lot of wonderful information, and we're going to step you right through setting up your own feed burner service. Because whether you do um, a show in in a blog form, which is just strictly text, or if you want to include pictures, or you want to do audio, or you want to do video, this particular service will let your clients know, your viewers know, uh, if you've done a new blog post. So here, let's go on to the, the next slide. It says every major blog is using FeedBurner to burn their RSS feeds because it is a free, feature-rich system that you cannot turn down. FeedBurner provides statistics, feed optimization option, feed publication option, and much more. Integrating FeedBurner and Google Analytics is a must for every WordPress blog. In this article, we will show you how to, you can set up for WordPress blog feeds with FeedBurner and use it to help take your blog to the next level. So obviously it's it's going to sell you on the services, and as a matter of fact, I don't think FeedBurner needs a lot of uh, a lot of uh, salesmanship because it really sells itself. It says uh, why FeedBurner is important for bloggers. FeedBurner is a free service that is loaded with options that you do not get with the default WordPress feed. Some of the features include statistics about your RSS subscribers. Now RSS means really simple syndication, so you can analyze and optimize your blog posts. Give your users multiple options to subscribe, such as email and other feed reader, NetVibes, Google, etc. Social proof, subscriber count, options to customize your feed, such as modify post headings, branding, and more. Branding is really important, too, and I'll talk about that uh, in future podcasts. Options to ping various feed reading services once you publish your posts. That's just to make sure that they got there and they're, and they're pingable. Pingable means that are you there on the internet? It's like phoning somebody, and, and when you phone somebody, they're home. That's a ping, a successful ping will tell you that your post made it exactly to where it should have gone. Integrate Google AdSense to monetize your RSS feeds and more. So let's go on to the next slide. So here you see, looking for feeds that now, when you get into FeedBurner, you're going to be asked to fill out the information. And so I'm assuming that you've uh, got a name for your blog and just use the exact same name of your blog in your FeedBurner feed. So here you go. <clears throat> it says, welcome, let us burn a feed for you. The original blog or feed address you've entered has been verified. So I just put Abbotsford Small Business. So this is the slide that you will be seeing when you are in FeedBurner itself. Here's what happens next in the setup process. FeedBurner will apply some of our most popular services to your new feed to get you started. You can always modify or remove them later. So that's a nice feature about FeedBurner, that uh, you can go back and change whatever you want. This new feed will be activated in your FeedBurner account. You may also want to set up some optional traffic stats, tracking, and podcasting services. So give your feed its title and FeedBurner.com. So, for example, on the feed title, if you are talking about plumbing, just put um, feed title um, Joe's Plumbing, and then for the feed address, you want to put uh, the name of your blog so people can see it. Always tie it into the name of your blog because uh, you see up on the top there, just where it says feed address, it says HTTP colon forward slash forward slash feeds dot feedburner dot com forward slash. That always must be in your feed burner string or people won't be able to find it at FeedBurner. And then you put your feed address in there. All right, next slide. So it said to me, congratulations, your FeedBurner feed is now live. You want to dress it up a little bit. So, uh, and I would, uh, I would advise that if you're a newbie to FeedBurner, you subscribe to the feed and share it with others at the blue address that you see right at the top there, the top third. And it says, for your convenience, FeedBurner has applied the following services to your new feed. Browser-friendly improves your feed's appearance in most web browsers and makes it easier to subscribe to. And FeedBurner stats tracks basic feed traffic statistics. You, you control your feed. All services are optional and can be changed anytime. Now, I, at this point, I had completed step one of two, and there's three steps to it. Uh, three steps? Yeah, I believe. Well, this one is there's two, but in other slides, there's step three. So uh, you've completed step one of two. In step two, you may consider adding additional free feed burner stats options for a more richly detailed view of your feed readership. You know what? Here's my thinking. 
Um, you can either go overboard and click all the buttons <laughs> or not click any at all. I would advise that until you learn what the analytics do. For example, you can go out and, and go on Google and say, you know, what does feed burner analytics do? And then if you want to decide to go back and click on the buttons for that, you can. So let's go on to the next slide, shall we? It says, welcome, let's burner feed. Oh, this is really important. Now you see the feed address there? Always make sure that you've got your feed address separate from your feed title and then click the next. All right, so this is what my feed address looks like. HTTP forward, uh, colon forward slash forward slash Abbotsford small business dot com forward slash feed. And there is the second half. Now, oh, on this one, there was uh, there was two feeds. So if you get into a, a situation like that, for example, um, one of the feeds was likely the uh, on the comments. You see at the bottom there, it says comments. This is probably tied in with the comment box on my WordPress blog. That's what they do sometimes is they interact with it. So what I did is I just uh, chose first one up at the top. All right, so congratulations, your feed burner is live on the smart casks. Now, here, here's what I did. Feed burners allow the following. Smart casks make your feed podcast ready. Now, this is really important when you go and you want to open it up to iTunes. And in future shows, we will definitely be telling you about how to get your show up to all the good folks that own an iPhone device. That's really, really important. Browser-friendly improves your feed's appearance. <clears throat> <clears throat> browsers makes it easier to subscribe to and feed burner stacks so there you go there's the picture the way it should have been provided <laughs> so let's go to the next slide shall we all right configure your podcast and tell iTunes how to list it now this this is really important if you want to go and set up with iTunes and I strongly suggest that you should do the iTunes and I will be in the future doing a podcast on just doing the iTunes itself. So create podcast enclosures from links to any rich media file. That was uh, my choice on my particular feed runner. Include iTunes podcasting elements. Yes, I want a category in business because I'm helping small and medium-sized businesses. And the subcategory is business news. So when you get to that page, you just fill it out according to your own specific needs. All right, so here's another picture of the same thing, but uh, a little bit more of, of the page. It said podcast image location. Now, if you have a, a picture of your business, of your logo, and you upload it to your WordPress blog, then it'll probably be in the WordPress uh, content folder. Then all you have to do is load it up to content folder and then point it, the podcast image location, to that particular picture, and it will bring up a picture. It's nice to have a picture of your podcast shows because that also helps your branding. So right for now, I didn't have uh, a picture loaded up there, but uh, I have a picture, but I just haven't linked it to the podcast image location, but I will do that. And then you want to give podcast subtitle. And then po podcast summary, um, supply articles, videos, and podcasts about how to use the technology and integrate it into your own small to medium-sized business. And then podcast search keywords. You can go in and change these says Valley um, Technology, Technology in the Fraser Valley, Rick Holland, Eflexonics. But uh, just load them up with uh, several different sentences worth of keywords, all the ones. That, now, on this, on the podcast search keywords, you can use a keyword search generator. Um, they're free. And just go on and see which ones relative to your business work the best for doing the keywords. And then podcast authors, email address, so at averagefordbusiness at gmail.com. I also included RSS, uh, media RSS information in podcast to Yahoo search, because I, I have a Yahoo account, and I think Yahoo is still f quite important. So, the number three of this particular step, so first it was claim your feed, second it was set up a podcast, and third it was analyze traffic. Says get more gusto from your feed traffic statistics. Feed burner stats automatically measure the general traffic level for your feed. You may also consider additional options that can give you insight into how engaged your audience is with your content. 
So if you want, you can go real deep, deep here and see uh, almost to the bottom of, of the page. It says click-throughs. How often people click items back to your site. Right now, I have just opened up uh, Apps for Small Business a couple of weeks ago, so I don't anticipate a lot of click-throughs yet. But uh, some people are disappointed with the click-through values. Do not lose heart. It does get better. It, you know, it all depends on are you selling a product internationally or are you selling a product in within your city or, or town. Um, don't think that huge numbers are going to do you a, a favor because if you only make a widget that you, you sell locally uh, and you're not selling it, say if you've got a, a barbershop, you can't set up barbershop franchises all over the world and you have one in your particular city or town. So your numbers are going to be fairly slow or fairly small on the click throughs. Now on the bottom it says item enclosure downloads podcasts only. I would definitely click that. That also has to do with setting up for um, iTunes. All right. So here it says on the top optimize, publicize, monetize, and troubleshoot. So here we we've got uh, the RSS is all ready to go. Your feed is ready for the world. Now what? And it says integrate. Feed burner integration varies depending on which platform you use to publish your blog. Some of those popular platforms are listed below with links to the most important features. Now, if you have a blogger account, this is perfect to click on to redirect your blogger feed to your blogger, your, your feed, burner, feed burner feed. Then it also says publish a chiclet to display your feed burner feed. I always click on publish a chiclet because feed burner is um, internationally recognized all over the internet. And then it says offer blogs via uh, updates via email. That's exactly what you want to do. And then so you've got Blogger, you've got TypePad, and you've got self-hosted WordPress, which I am using the self-hosted WordPress. So let's go on to the next slide. It says, <clears throat> and this just gives, gives you a snapshot of uh, self-hosted. Now there are two kinds. There's WordPress.com and self-hosted WordPress. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go on to the next slide here. Okay, now this is really important. You want, if you're going to set up an RSS uh, service like FeedBurner, you want the ability of the people that can come to your website to be able to subscribe via email. All they do is put their email address on your blog Somewhere there's going to be a little chiclet or a little um, a little form that they fill out, and on mine I said something like um, you know please enter email below to subscribe, and then every single time you release some some new material, a blog or a picture or or, or a video, it lets the person know and they can download your show. So for example, if you've done something on Spreaker or if you've done a video, not so much for the videos if they're mobile, but it's really important for people. To listen to podcasts, either if they've got an iPhone or an Android device, and now a Windows phone is going to be a, a force to be reckoned with as well. So you want to think of RSS really not so much for video, although it's very powerful for video, but I use it more for the mobile people that want to take my shows on the road. 